and gentlemen to Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at an Indonesian martial arts movie from 2011. That movie is The Raid Redemption. Now, a lot of people have wanted me to watch this movie. I'm not totally sure why. And in fact, even more people have wanted me to watch it since I covered Dread. Most of them saying, if you loved Dread, this thing is even better. I'd like to tell you right now, I kind of sort of have my doubts, but that's because I liked Dread that much. But also because here it really, it, uh, uh, I, guess, I guess I should sort of explain what the plot was to Dread before I go on. Dread was about two cops going into an enclosed city block over 100 stories tall taking on a massive gang. This movie is about 20 cops going into a 30 story building and taking on probably a much smaller gang. So they basically took Dread. I totally understand that Dread was made after this, but, I'm, but, but seeing as how I saw Dread first, let me just say this. They have scaled back in the places where it didn't have to be scaled, scaled back and scaled up where it by all rights shouldn't be scaled up anyway. Guys, when you have a 30-story building and you're putting 20 fucking cops in there, that is going to kind of cut into the tension a lot, unless most of them die within seconds of, of entering the building. God help me, I really hope so. Otherwise, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of tension here. I totally understand understand that it sounds as if I'm, you know, like shitting on this thing before I even push play, but I still have hopes. I'm just saying that I do have those like niggling doubts that are just sort of haunting me here. But hey, it, but hey, this thing could still wound up absolutely wowing me. And the only way I'm going to find out if it will is if I shut the fuck up and I push play and I'm going to do that right now. So without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out The Raid Redemption. So, let me see if I understand this. So, the cops are going to take out a, like, drug lord. He owns the 30-story building. He's been renting it out to pushers and scumbags and other such, you know, lowlifes of the world. And he has an in-house drug lab. Perhaps maybe instead of sending cops in, why don't you just bomb the fucking building, okay? Are you, are you tell me that there's no way that the fucking police force have, oh, I don't know, like rocket launchers or something, and just blow the fucker up from outside instead of risking the lives of, you know, so many officers. I totally understand that we wouldn't have a movie then, but goddammit, at least that would make some sense. You know, guys, how I mentioned about how having too many cops was going to kill a whole lot of the tension and a whole lot of the, like, awesomeness of this? It's totally doing that right now. I just kind of wanted to share. This movie's kind of dull just because there's too many fucking cops. And almost none of them have any real personality. No, I, no, scratch that. None of them have any fucking personality. It's actually kind of sad. I don't know how in the hell this is possible. I am watching a very high-impact, high-speed action fight sequence, and it's boring. How the fuck do you make something like this boring? How the hell do you make one guy wailing on fucking tons of guys boring? Especially when it's that fucking, you know, frenetic. How, how the hell do they do this? That should have, by all rights, been fucking awesome. No, it was dull as shit. What the fuck's going on here? So, we have another fight, fight scene. This one's almost as boring as the last one. Mind you, this one is still just a little bit better, but it still doesn't help the fact that the fight is absolutely boring as shit. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how, exactly how in the fuck you fight, exactly how you fuck up fight scenes this badly, but I'm going to have to try to explain that when this fucking thing's done, aren't I? So they are trying to make the villain seem incredibly threatening, but 
I'm sorry, he, he really isn't. He started off kind of sort of cool like the first time you saw him, but now, similar to everything else in this goddamn movie, he's just gotten dull. I don't give a shit about him because we haven't been given a reason to care about whether or not he lives or dies. That is how bad the writing in this fucking thing is, guys. Oh my god, I cannot wait for this stupid thing to finally end. He just slit that dude's neck with a piece of fluorescent light tube. That should have been amazing. But seeing as how the fight that led up to that was so absolutely mind-meltingly dull, it really doesn't do a whole lot for me. And I finally figured out what is wrong with the fucking fights in this thing, and I'll talk about that when the movie's done. Thank the fucking gods above this damn thing is done. No, no, no. You can shut the fuck up right now. Your music was shit. But I'll get to that in a sec, hopefully. Well, guys, that was the Raid Redemption, and I was genuinely expecting better. I really was expecting something at least halfway decent. As much as people were playing up this fucking thing as, the, as one of the best action films ever made, in fact, that actually is the blurb on the front, which is from Twitch Film, the best action film in decades. I was expecting at least something passable. We couldn't even get passable. We couldn't even get halfway good here, okay? Why don't we start with the writing? Because the writing is the most grievous sin in this movie. All right, first of all, First of all, uh, one thing you need for any movie, and I say this time and time again, you need characters you can care about. Because if you have no reason to give to give to give a rat's ass about about the main character, or if there's no reason to feel threatened by the villain, then there's no reason to fucking watch this thing. Now, is there? And that's the big problem here. Is well, first of all, our main character, uh, what the hell was his name? Rama. Rama. I'm gonna give you all of Rama's personality. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you all of the depth that Rama has. He has a pregnant wife, or possibly a pregnant, pregnant girlfriend. They don't really specify much. Uh, he has a brother who apparently is a disgrace to his family. Otherwise, he is about as interesting as Particle Board. Yeah, and he is the most, and he is the most developed character in this movie because he has the pregnant wife and the brother. Most people don't even have that. There is one other character who also is absolutely corrupt as shit, but that's really it in terms of personality. Nobody else has a thing. Everybody else is just there. Most of them don't even have names, and if they do have names, I do not remember them. I barely, I barely re, I barely remember Rama's name for God's sake, and he's the main character in this thing. Why? Well, because apparently names and personality don't matter in martial arts films, which I'm going to call bullshit on right now. It matters in any movie. If you are expected to care about what happens to these characters, if you are expected to care about what goes on in the film, you have to have characters who are actually in some way or some way well, you know, written. You have to care. And the writers here apparently don't think that you need to and thus are insulting and thus are insulting the intelligence of the viewer because apparently you are not good enough for well-developed characters and that is bullshit. Now while I'm on the subject of that, one thing that might have helped to, uh, you know, like that might have helped like fill out our characters a little bit would have been dialogue that wasn't stilted and terrible. Now mind you, I'm basing that off of the subtitles that uh, came with this thing. The subtitles are horrible. The dialogue is absolutely stilted and completely un it just do it just doesn't sound natural like at all. Part of that has to do, I think, with the swearing, and I want to make this point abundantly clear. As many of you know, if, if, you, if you've been watching my stuff for a long time, I swear a lot, and I mean a lot. I'm also fans, uh, or I'm also a fan of filmmakers like Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino, who also write incredibly vulgar. The dialogue in this movie makes, it, makes everything I have done and everything that Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino have done look like Sunday morning sermons, okay? That is, that is how foul the language in this thing is. And the worst part is, is that almost all of it seems completely unnecessary. And it's all there essentially just for, just for the sake of being there, just to go, oh, look at us, we are edgy because we swear. No, 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 that's not how how that works. It 
comes off really bad and it seriously takes dialogue which is which is just which is just already hollow and wooden and stilted and makes it just well hollow wooden stilted and vulgar on top of everything else there's nothing there in terms of dialogue that is going that's going to make you care but of course it, but of course we might have had dialogue that mattered if we had characters who were actually in some way you know well uh, written do you do do you kind of see guys how all this kind of falls into place now this is also an action film action films especially martial arts films like this uh, take take a lot of stock in the fight choreography and the fight choreography in this thing is an absolute joke I'd like to tell you right now if it, if it were maybe in the hands of a competent filmmaker it would probably have been awesome because the moves here were, were kind of cool at least the ones that weren't over overused to to death however a secret when you're doing uh, fight scenes and movies is you need the moves to flow. There has to be a natural fluidity from one move to the next. That is the big secret about why a lot of action films look awesome and certain ones look terrible. Because the ones that look awesome have a fantastic natural natural movement to everything and everything flows perfectly. And then you have crap like this where each move transitions in to the next with with a damn near audible thunk. This thing feels almost over over you know choreographed, and that's a big problem, guys, because it really then feels far 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 less like it's people who know what who who know what they're doing, and more just people who just basically know that who basically just know that I have to dodge here, stab here, slice there, kick here, swing here, and they don't care if anything looks good they just care about getting the moves over and done with and it absolutely destroys any reason to watch this because we already have characters who are completely hollow we have a story which is complete garbage and now we have fight scenes that are boring guys i should tell you i'm gonna tell you right now at no time should one man holding just a knife squ squaring off at, against like a dozen other people all of them holding fucking you know like uh tongfas and you know beating the high holy hell out of every single one of them at no time should something like that be boring but this movie found a way to make it absolutely mind meltingly dull this movie could perfectly cure insomnia uh that's that is how dull the fight scenes in this stupid thing are I know a lot of people have tried to compare this thing to Dread, and I've tried not to make those kinds of comparisons. Now, I don't need to. Why? Because Dread was actually written, you know, well, and, and it had action scenes that you could, you know, care about. I don't even care about the similarities in terms of, oh, oh, you know, it's cops in a building against crooks. Um, no, 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 I am not even counting that. Dread actually was written well, it was filmed well, and the score was decent. I am going to get to the music in just a sec. Uh, you know, it basically did everything right where this thing did damn near everything wrong. I will say that camera work is good. There is really no problem here in terms of camera work or lighting. Let's talk about the music. This film has two separate scores. It has the score that was that was with the film when it first came out, and then there's the special, special score that was made for U.S. audiences, because apparently we, as Americans, are not good enough for the music that was originally in this movie. Instead, we got what I can only assume is trash, because it's from a member of Linkin Park, and I can count on one hand the number of good Linkin Park songs that are out there. So, naturally, I had to fiddle around in the menus and try and try to get the music you know, turn back to what was originally on this thing. And the score, it's nothing, it's nothing special. It's nothing, it is nothing that is going to set the world on fire. Uh, and in fact, actually, at times, it just basically sounds like the same song played over, played over the entire fucking movie, which then means that, that the score, similar to everything else, is lazy and boring and dull. I swear to God, guys, I wanted to like this. As much... As much as I mentioned my, you know, doubts early on, I still wanted to at least find something good here that wasn't just the camera work and the lighting. And it couldn't give me that. It couldn't give me a single genuine positive outside of technical elements. And that's horrible. That is absolutely... No, no, this movie, I could not recommend this thing, guys, for any reason. This is one of the dullest action movies I have ever seen. Considering the fact that the fight scenes are all 
are all incredibly, incredibly fast, it takes a lot to make those sorts of things boring. You have to actively try to make those suck. And the filmmakers did. This movie is unwatchably dull. I, it guys was a chore getting through, getting through this movie. I'm happy now that I've seen it. Now, I never have to watch it again, thank fucking God. Now, because this is Fan Appreciation Month, The Raid Redemption came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is someone who sent in a couple other movies, and his YouTube channel is TRC2 Rock On. Please, guys, head over there and check out his channel, dude. Thank you. I totally understand you sent me uh, a bunch of messages saying that you really hoped that I liked this. I actually kind of wanted to, but this movie actively went out of its way to make me hate it. And that's saying a lot, because, again, you guys have no idea how much I wanted to take take some take some fun with this movie, but it it's not fun. It's dull, it's boring, it's tedious, I'm... Really happy I'm done watching it. So anyway, um, I need I need to go watch something better. I need to go watch something that isn't that isn't going to put me to fucking sleep. Uh, I know, I know. I just got in my Blu-ray of Doctor Fucking Strange Love. I'm gonna go and watch that. Why? Because that's actually a good movie. All right, I'm going to go and do that, guys. Uh, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.